What's up Precision Junkies? Kellen back here with Inside Out Precision and today I'm talking about tuning and more specifically bear shaft tuning and then uh, to kind of double check that you can do what's called walk back tuning but generally a bear shaft tune if done correctly will produce a, a perfect walk back tune. So I want to preface this by saying that this is all assuming that the spine of your arrow is correct and that you have started with what we call a, you know, a zero knock height or a level knock height and a center shot here. So if your arrow is way too weak or, or way too stiff, uh, you will see it in the paper tune and then you'll definitely see it when you test it when you shoot your bear shaft and I'll, I'll show you what that's gonna look like or tell you what it will look like here in a second. But today I would finally set up my traverse uh, been a long time coming. I was waiting on some gear and it's just taken too long, so I just threw all my old stuff on it. Uh, I'm running the Trophy Taker SmackDown Pro, uh, eight inch spider stabilizer, Spot Hog Fast Eddy. Um, just a really simple setup. You know, this is my, my hunting rig and I'll shoot some 3D with it. And again, you know, Matthews seemed to always tune up really, really easy. I had this thing dialed in about five shots. Um, I actually made an Instagram story that you can follow along. Um, it's currently posted on there as we speak. And I kind of chronicled every, every step of the way that I took to, to get this tune. So uh, when I first shot it through paper with my, with my fletched arrows, I had a little, over, little bit of a right hand tear. So I swapped, you know, both of these top hats were pushed all the way to the left. So I swapped one of them, pushed it back to the right. And I got what looked like a, you know, a bullet hole with a fletched arrow. Now, a fletched arrow, you know, when it shoots a bullet hole, you, you should get good groups with all your fletched arrows. But um, when I shot my bear shaft, I noticed it was actually a little tail high and pretty much just straight tail high, but a little bit tail high left. And so what that's telling me is that without the, the steerage or the, the drag of the veins, that shaft is wanting to kick a little bit high left. And what that does is at at distance when I'm shooting, if that if there's more pressure on one side of that, that vein basically when it's flying through the air, as that arrow rotates every time it hits that side with a little more air pressure on it, it's gonna drive that arrow further one way or the other. So for me, I probably would have been hitting to the right the further I went out in distance, even though all my, my levels and everything are on, um, which is really important for walk back tuning. You wanna make sure that your all your second and third axis is all set. Otherwise you're gonna get kind of a false reading just based on you know your no, bow not being level. Uh, but even with all that being level, I would have got a little bit of a right hand drift, I think. So at 10 yards, maybe they'd be perfectly centered and then at 60, everything would be you know out on the right hand side of the dot or maybe you know even a couple inches further outside the dot to the right. So. I'm going to show you the holes here real quick that I shot and show you the first ones. Um, after, I, after I got the, the first bullet hole with the, the fletch shaft, I'm going to show you what the bear shaft did. So come over here. So these two holes right here, zoom in on those. See, that looks like a perfect bullet hole with a fletch shaft. But then when I shot my bear shaft, I'm actually about an eighth of an inch tail high and right. So what I did to alleviate that was I moved my rest up just, and we're talking micro, micro adjustments here, which is this is where it's really nice if you actually have a rest that is micro adjustable because there's no, you don't have to worry about it slipping too far and then not knowing where you went. Um, this is not actually micro adjustable, so I just relieved the tension on the cord and just am really careful when I move it. But I moved that rest up and then to the right, just about maybe a 16th of an inch up and about a maybe a 32nd to the right because it's, it's kicking just a hair tail left on my, my bare shaft. And I want zero direction out of that shaft when it's coming out of the the, the bow. I want it to come out perfectly straight so that all those veins drag evenly and I'm going to track in a straight line from 10 out to you know 100 yards or however far it is I'm shooting. So I made a couple of adjustments, came back and shot my bear shaft again and I ended up with this little guy right here which is pretty much, trying to get that focused there, 
pretty much perfect. Um, it's having trouble focusing because there's no <laughs> nothing there to focus on. Um, but that's what I would consider a bullet hole with my with my bear shaft. I then came over and I shot my fletch shaft again, and there was really no change in my my fletch shaft here. You can see it right there. It's having trouble focusing on it, but. So the, the hole on my flat shaft didn't really change at all, even though the hole on my bear shaft did. So once I have a bullet hole with both uh, bear shaft and flat shaft, the next step is to test that. And to do that, you're gonna sight in with your, your fletched vein at 20 yards, and then you're gonna shoot your fletched, your fletched arrow, and then you're gonna grab your bear shaft and you're gonna shoot your bear shaft right behind it. And depending on where it impacts, you may even need to just micro adjust your rest a little bit more. Um, and I'll go over that here when we shoot. So I'm gonna go get the camera set up over here and we're gonna do a little test with my bear shaft and my fletch shaft. All right, so got the camera repositioned here. I'm gonna shoot my fletch shaft first. I just sighted in with it at 20 yards. Then I'm gonna shoot my bear shaft right behind it and we're gonna see where that ended up. And I'm looking ideally for a half inch or less in, in uh, difference in point of impact. Now, if, I, if my bear shaft is to the right of my flat shaft, I know that I need to just micro adjust that shaft actually towards the arrow because my, the arrow is kicking tail left causing the point to impact right. If it was kicking, or if I was impacting to the left, I would move my rest left just slightly because that's gonna bring the back of the arrow in. So you can, and when I say micro, I mean literally we're talking a 32nd of an inch at a time here sometimes. So you're not gonna see any difference in center shot, but it will make a difference the way it shoots. So let's see what this does here. It's like just about one o'clock in the X-ring. So that's a little bit left. I'm gonna take you down there real quick and we're gonna check it out. So you can see here, my fletched arrow is a little bit to the, oh, there we go. My fletched arrow is hitting about one o'clock and I actually shot a couple before this and you can see they all impacted that same hole. And you can actually see from the back here how the, the front of the arrow is pointed to the left and the, the back of the arrow is to the right of it. So that arrow is kicking tail right. So what I'm gonna go do is micro adjust my rest just ever so slightly to the left there and we're gonna see if it brings it together. Okay, so I just micro adjusted my rest here ever so slightly. About, I started with about a 16th of an inch um, and I'm gonna shoot my fletched arrow again I expect that to hit a little bit left because I just moved my rest to the left. All right, let's go see what that did. So now you can see right there, you can see how much closer those came together. So those are only about maybe three eighths or a half of an inch apart right there. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Now I am going to, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. Now I am gonna make a couple more adjustments. I'm gonna shoot it a couple more times. 
make sure everything's good, then make a couple more adjustments. Okay, so I just adjusted my rest a hair to the left. When I say a hair, I mean probably between a sixteenth and thirty second of an inch, somewhere in there, about probably about a sixteenth. It was one hash mark on my my rest. So I expect this to maybe hit just a hair left. Might not be enough to make any difference or see it at 20 yards. Um, but I'm not so much worried about where I'm hitting in the dot as long as both of them are together. Because if they're together, then I know that I've got a good tune and the, uh, I just need to move my sight. So I want this to be together. Yep, so I'm just a little bit left to where I was before, which is fine. That's what I'm expecting. Now this is the bear shaft, so I'm hoping that these are going to be within about a half an inch of each other. I think we have two. Grab the camera here and the tripod. So let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. So see, we're only about, no oh gosh, maybe three eighths of an inch, if that. And you know, with a fixed pin like that, that could easily just be the difference between my pin being here and here. So I'm actually, I'm actually really, really happy with that. Um, I, I think that's gonna tune really, really money all the way back. So hopefully that helps a little bit with bear shaft tuning. Uh, if you have any more tuning questions, please feel free to, to message me and ask. Uh, this is something that there's a lot of information around, some good, some bad. You know, this is something that we do literally every day here. And it's just that, you know, that was literally the uh, total between paper tuning and this bear shaft. I maybe moved that rest, not even an eighth of an inch up, down, and left and right, like combined. I mean, I've moved it maybe a sixteenth of an inch to the left and it moved my point of impact and brought those arrows together, you know, almost two inches. So you can see a little bit goes a long way. Uh, again, shoot me, shoot me a question on Instagram. Uh, we're at inside underscore out underscore precision. Um, I, I have a chance to check that a lot more than I do YouTube and it takes me less time to respond. So lots of times I can get back to you a little quicker on there. Uh, until next time, keep it in the middle and remember precision is a decision.